Rebuilding a Vintage Open Steam Launch Part 26 Radio Control Installation First of all, it's the emergency gas cutoff valve. A couple of parcels arrived in the post. One contained six Tower Pro metal geared servos, model MG995 servos to be exact. And I quite like these servos, they seem to be very robust with the metal gears. They're quite heavy, but that's not a problem with this particular boat, because the boat is carved from a lump of tree, so it's very buoyant. At this point I'd like to say that I do not need six servos for this installation, but when I buy things like servos, I generally buy extra ones. I also bought this. This is a closed loop system, the type of thing you would use on a rudder or an elevator on a model aircraft, or certain types of model aircraft. But the more I look at a closed loop system, the more I think it's going to be a little bit overcomplicated for this installation. As these Tower Pro MG995 servos are very powerful, I think one would do it. So I'm thinking about putting one in this position. But more about that in a future episode. For the moment I'd like to concentrate on using this little gas cutter file that I bought from Clevedon Steam, who sell on eBay, and I'm going to link this gas cutter file to a servo, so the servo will be able to turn the gas on or off. The default will be on, for normal running, but if there's any problems with the water, or any malfunction while the boat is sailing, by flicking a switch on the transmitter this will turn the gas off, the fire will go out, and the boat will not emulate a Viking funeral in the middle of the lake. First of all, I need to make a mounting for this servo assembly, and for this I'm using a piece of mahogany, and I'm cutting it diagonally, as you can see here. And also, as you can see here, I'm using a piece of metal to push the piece of wood through the blade. It's no good pushing the wood all the way through the blade and then forgetting to remove your finger, because if you forget to remove it, the blade will be very kind and remove it for you. I'm using my trusty old Burgess bandsaw for this. I've just fitted a new blade to it and it's cutting very well. And when the blade gets all the way through the mahogany, I end up with two almost perfect copies of each other, two triangular pieces of wood. I only need one of these pieces of wood, and I took it over to my belt sander and shaped it to fit inside the hull perfectly. It's looking a little dusty, but nevertheless it fits very well inside the boat. I'm using my little craft knife to just make a scratch in the paint so I know roughly where it's going to go. What I'm trying to achieve is to make the servo perfectly vertical in the boat. It doesn't need to be, but it just looks better that way. I cut a couple more pieces of mahogany in the shape of these two rectangular blocks. These will support the servo. So I'm going to start by fitting the first of the blocks to the tapered base. So to start with, I'm going to stick them together using cyanoacrylate adhesive as usual. But I'm not just going to rely on the cyanoacrylate adhesive. These are also going to be screwed together. So the whole construction, when it's finished, will be very strong indeed. So I'm sticking the parts first and I'll put the screws in later. I'm just checking that everything's square. And what I had to do for the other end of the servo is this. You can see exactly what I've done. Glued two blocks together and rounded the edge of one of them. Because the wire has to exit somewhere. It's quite important not to get cyanoacrylate adhesive over the bottom part of the servo. Because I don't actually want to stick the servo to the wood. And also I need an easy fit. And sometimes it's a good idea to use some temporary paper gaskets between the servo and the wooden mountings. That ensures an easy fit. But I've done so many of these sort of jobs that I can do it standing on my head. Well, not literally standing on my head, but I can do it without using paper packing gaskets. This clip shows me applying the CA glue, fitting the component, trying the servo in place to make sure it's not too tight or too slack. And then I'll leave it alone for a while for the cyanoacrylate adhesive to fully set before I then drill pilot holes all the way through the wood, which is going to allow me to screw these pieces of wood together also. I'm initially drilling these pilot holes with a very small twist drill. I'm going to need to counterbore these holes three quarters of the way through the depth of the wood to allow me to use some very small screws that I have to hold everything together. And then, I'm going to go through one more time with a slightly larger pilot drill. That will make it very easy to tighten the screws. It's also important when selecting the position for the pilot holes for the screws that they're not going to get in the way of the screws that are actually going to hold the servo down onto the top blocks. 
This simple piece of woodwork is not really that simple if you get it wrong, so I'm taking great care to make sure that the drill goes where I want it to go. So now it's time to counterbore the holes, re-drill them with a larger pilot hole and fit the screws. And I'm going to speed this up because it's very tedious and it takes quite a while to do. You get the general idea. The size of the pilot hole is quite important because you don't want to overstrain yourself screwing the screws in, nor do you want to split the mahogany. So that's the mounting base more or less complete. Time to look at the servo. In this clip, I'm fitting the four rubber grommets to the servo. These rubber grommets are to allow for a shockproof mounting. This is important to prevent any vibration coming from the motor in the model, particularly if it's an internal combustion engine, or the multitude of vibrations that you would get if you were using a servo like this to operate the steering mechanism in a model car. So after the four rubber grommets have been fitted, it's time to fit the brass eyelets, and these always go in from underneath, not the other way around. Now I'll put the servo into the mounting, and whilst I'm holding the servo in the mounting, I drill the pilot holes to take the screws that are going to hold the servo in place. And after clearing away the sawdust with a paintbrush, I can screw the servo into position. But no sooner had I screwed the servo into position, I unscrewed the servo again because I need to do some more work on the mounting. This mounting is quite strong now, but it's time to mount the gas valve. The whole point of putting a servo on a mounting is not just to make it look pretty, it's to operate this gas valve. And as it turns out, totally by luck, the holes in the gas valve bracket more or less matched up with the holes that are drilled for the screws. So all I needed to do was tap these using a 6BA tap, and screw in a couple of long 6BA bolts all the way through both of the pieces of mahogany. It's a little bit over the top as far as an installation goes, but at least the gas valve's never going to fall off. This is the other side, and I'm making an aluminium heat shield, just because the servo is going to be located quite close to the condenser, which gets hot. It's not really necessary, it's a little bit over the top, but it was cold outside and I wasn't doing anything else. When I was fitting the rubber grommets to the servo, I couldn't help but think that they're a little soft. They're made out of some sort of silicone rubber, whereas normally I'm used to much denser ones. These are another brand. So I thought, no, I think I'm going to fit tighter ones. I have a box full of them anyway. So I fitted standard rubber grommets and the firmer, because don't forget this servo is going to have to push against the valve, so I really don't need the facility for it to move around. Here's the assembly almost completed. The gas valve's the wrong way round, and all it really needs now is a link arm between the servo arm and the arm on the gas valve, which needs to be turned at 90 degrees from where it is currently. The last thing I did was to drill three holes in the bottom of the assembly and find some suitable screws to screw it into the boat. You can't beat having things easily removable. I was going to epoxy resin this in place, but I would have regretted it, because it's going to be much easier to pipe it up and mess about with it when it's out of the boat. What I'm doing at the moment, and I'm using a really old school type ruler, mainly because it's more visible than the metal one, even though somebody scribbled on it, I'm measuring the distance from the decking down to where the servo is, to make sure that when I fit the top superstructure which goes well down into the hull, it's not going to foul the servo. And the good news is, it's not going to foul the servo. So now I know that, I'm removing the fitting from the boat because I need to paint it. And to start the painting process I'm going to use some etch primer. This is Phoenix Precision Paints etch primer. And I buy it from my friends at Blackgates Engineering. It's really good stuff. And it etches its way into metal parts so that the paint actually sticks to the metal parts. So I'm hoping that the paint is going to stick to this piece of aluminium. I've roughened the aluminium so I've got a good key. So I think everything should be okay. Right, I've had enough now. It is really cold in my workshop today. I'm going to go into the studio and sit in front of my nice video editor, right next to the radiator. But first of all, I'm going to shake the tin to mix the paint, just like it says in the instructions. I ask myself if I'm shaking the tin or am I just shivering? That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.